In this video, we'll discuss a hot topic that's been making waves in the motorcycle community, Harley-Davidson's recent controversy over their woke policies and their subsequent apology. Was their mea culpa good enough? What actions need to take place in order to restore our trust? There's much to discuss. Let's do work. You're going to want to watch this full video for my special announcement towards the end and in general to support your boy anyway. And I'll try to keep it brisk and interesting. About a month ago, Harley-Davidson faced backlash from some of their loyal consumers and social media influencers for adopting woke policies. These included diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI initiatives, subjecting white employees only to DEI trainings, holding LGBTQ boot camps at their offices, hosting an event that had story time with children and drag queens, among other things. <sighs> Harley, you had one job. One job. Shut the heck up and make epic motorcycles. I am literally standing beside myself wondering how the leadership of the epitome of a pure-blooded American company could be so very stupid. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not saying I hate DEI. I am not saying that. I am just saying that if my DEI manager's hair was on fire and I had a single cup of water, well, I'd be very thirsty that day. Very thirsty. Hey, dehydration can be dangerous. Anyway, Harley Davidson's idiocy was called out by Robbie Starbuck, a conservative vigilante who exposes such companies, and understandably, the backlash was intense, with calls for boycotts and a lot of heated discussions online. Many Harley owners debadged their Harleys, and one YouTuber literally shot his Harley to death with more firepower than can be measured. In response to the backlash, Harley Davidson quickly smartened up and released a statement in August, renouncing their DEI initiatives and other controversial policies. They emphasized their commitment to hiring the best talent and making all employees feel welcome, but clarified that they no longer have a DEI function or hiring quotas. Okay, some unsolicited advice for Harley-Davidson corporate. You want to make all employees welcome? Then shut up and make motorcycles. That's it. It's not difficult, people. They're same in red. It is critical to our business that we hire and retain the best talent and that all employees feel welcome. That said, we have not operated a DEI function since April 2024, and we do not have a DEI function today. We do not have hiring quotas, and we no longer have supplier diversity spend goals. Guys, I know you want to debadge your Harleys. I know you want to buy Indians instead, and that's cool. It's a free country. Unless you vote wrong in November, anyway. Use your head this time, voters. But listen, there is literally one moron to blame for this whole fiasco. Harley CEO Jokin Zeitz, the self-proclaimed Taliban of sustainability, I kid you not. The CEO of a company well known for extremely loud and catalytic converterless exhausts labeled himself the Taliban of sustainability. Zeitz's comments sparked outrage among many in the motorcycle community and beyond. The Taliban is a group associated with violence and terrorism, and many found the comparison deeply offensive, especially given the group's history and impact on American lives. Let me make my position clear. Zeitz should be immediately terminated. There is no question. I'm not saying he can't change for the better and work elsewhere in the industry, and if he does change, I'll forgive him and move forward, but he's clearly the opposite of Harley Davidson's culture, and he should be terminated along with anyone else of his ilk at Harley corporate. They have no business there. It's morons like him that are hurting the good folks that are the backbone of Harley Davidson. And that's my point. By boycotting Harley, we're not hurting this soy boy. We're hurting the men and women like us who get oil on our hands, grease under our fingernails, working at the factories and at the dealers who are hardcore riders just like us, who are hardcore freedom lovers just like us, and who love their motorcycles and have a passion for them beyond whatever you could possibly find going on at a random Honda dealer somewhere. We can't hurt the dealers and workers. They're the lifeblood of Harley Davidson. And I guarantee these dealers and workers do not align with Jokin's antics. So let's talk about how a little forgiveness can go a long way. First, it's important to recognize that companies like individuals can make mistakes, especially when you're looking down the barrel of the woke mob, which has thankfully been losing steam recently as people start to smarten up. Harley-Davidson did listen to their customers and took action to address their concerns. This shows a willingness to adapt and prioritize their loyal community. They also did it probably to save their lives, but anyway. And if they stick to it, and especially oust Zeitz, and get a better CEO, like, I don't know, a conservative one at least, someone who doesn't cry every time they twist the throttle of their bike because they're hurting the planet, and if we keep our eye on them, I think we should forgive them. Second. 
Harley-Davidson has a long history of supporting first responders, active military members, and veterans, aka heroes. And there's nothing more American than supporting our heroes. Harley's recent statement reaffirmed their commitments to these groups, which are integral to their brand identity. Lastly, as I said, boycotting a brand like Harley-Davidson can have unintended consequences. It can hurt the employees, men and women who depend on the company for their livelihoods to feed their children, and just want to love the rider life without corporate shenanigans disrupting the community that many of us cherish. Instead of boycotting, let's hold the CEO accountable and encourage Harley to stay true to their core values. Now, let's bring in some wisdom from scripture to guide our thoughts on forgiveness. And by the way, if you're a non-believer, give your boy a few seconds. I promise your ears aren't going to catch on fire. In the Bible, Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This verse reminds us of the importance of forgiveness and compassion even when we feel wronged. According to Matthew 6.14 and 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Forgiveness doesn't mean we forget or condone the actions, but it allows us to move forward without holding on to resentment, eating away at us inside. By forgiving Harley Davidson, we can encourage them to learn from their mistakes and continue to support the community that we all love. I, for one, have decided to partner with a Harley Davidson dealer and ride and review some of their motorcycles for those of us who just want to enjoy bikes. I assure you the dealer I'm working with and most, if not all, of the dealers share the values of their core consumer base because we're all the same people. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Was Harley Corporate's Mia Culpa enough? Should we give Harley Davidson a second chance? Or is the boycott still justified? Let me know your thoughts as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more motorcycle and car content. Ride safe, brothers and sisters. And always remember the motto, always be kinder than necessary. And I will see you in the next one. You guys are exceptional.